He is the creator and sustainer of all the worlds, whether those worlds are known or unknown to mankind. Does not wisdom cry, does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice. Hello, I'm Charlie. You may know me as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, and I'm here today to talk to you about Jesus Christ, the Sacred Heart. Also, Jesus Christ in the Via Creativa, in the way of creation, in the creative way. If you're unfamiliar with those terms, you may want to head over to wisdomscry.com and check out our intro to creation spirituality section. In there, you will see a episode dedicated completely to a brief primer on the Via Creativa, and it will help get you up to speed. In brief, the Via Creativa is the creative way. It is that we are a part of God's creation and That we have a responsibility to participate and direct creation. That God creates in us, through us, with us, and by us. And that we need to become partners with God in the creation of the world. And this brings us (laughs) very quickly to the sacred heart of Jesus. In Matthew eleven, twenty-eight 28 through 29, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me, for I am humble and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In this passage, Jesus reveals to us his most holy and sacred heart. As Jesus also said, he came to give us life and to give it more abundantly. And we are reformed, refashioned after his image, after his likeness. The image of God within us is conformed to the image of Jesus and restored to the full image of the Godhead so that we can truly participate in the act of creation with him. In the book of Ezekiel, God speaking to the prophets tells us, I will give them one heart. I'm going to stop there for a second. One heart. This is the sacred heart of Jesus. I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. That's in Ezekiel 11, 19 and 20. This is what Jesus came to do. This is the work of the kingdom, the work of the gospel, to take the stony, hardened heart that has been forced on so many of us, the stony, hardened heart that is not our natural state, that is not the person we are intended to be. And our hearts may have been hardened by so many different circumstances. It could be through some form of violence that was done on us, or through neglect, or isolation. or I mean, There are just so many things that they make me emotional, and I don't really want to say them right now. But you know what I'm talking about. There's so many things that can happen to us. And not just big things, little things. 
that can harden our hearts and make them stony and cold, that kill the basic compassion that is natural to us, that is our intended state. So many things that harden our hearts and teach us to not be honest or act justly. There are so many things that can cool those fires within us and make our hearts turn to stone. And this is what the gospel is about. We are citizens of the divine kingdom of Zion. We are the children of the promised land. We are the children of God made in God's own image. We are meant to be just, to be holy, and to work out that justice in this world, to be creative in this world, whether that's through song or dance or writing or poetry or anything, cooking, taking care of children, being there for friends in need, whatever it is, big or small. That's why we're here. That's the purpose of our lives. That's the point of us, if I can say it that way. And so here we are in this place. And so many things can make us cynical. So many things can take that tender heart that we all had as children and cool it and harden it and turn it to stone. But luckily for us, the Lord Jesus Christ has come. And he will give us one heart, his heart, his sacred heart burning out of love for the cosmos and for all that is within it. We get this through faith. As Jesus said, as we read earlier, come to me all who labor and are heavy burdened. Do you work? (laughs) Do you labor? Do you struggle? Even if it's not, I mean, you don't have to look at this. You know, so many people want to self short their own suffering because yes, in comparison, I am not suffering as much as somebody else. No, my life is infinitely better than a Syrian refugee. And that is not something to boast about. You know, but just because I do not have the same problems that they have does not mean that I do not have problems. We need to take care of them and we need to take care of ourselves. Your problems, whatever they are, are your problems. They're your burdens. They're your labor. And Jesus says, come unto me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest Rest you will find in his most sacred heart. Now, how do, how do you do that? How do you come to Jesus? This is what prayer and meditation is for. These are the roots of the via creativa, the creative way, the foundation of it. Learning to pray, to just say, Lord, in your holy name, I call out to you here in my time of labor where I am burdened heavily with this. Come to me. I have come to you. Give me your rest. Give me your peace. And then accepting it, taking that time of quiet solitude. A couple minutes. Just listen to your breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. And actually enter that rest which Jesus provides which is your natural state, which is the place to which all things being equaled, you would never leave. But of course, all things are not equal. Enter that place. Be calm. Breathe in. Breathe out. If any thought, any emotion, any twinge of pain, discomfort, For me, it's almost always an itchy spot on my nose. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just breathe in, breathe out. 
Focus on your breath. If any thought arises, don't chastise yourself. If a pain arises, don't chastise yourself. Any distraction, just acknowledge it and let it go. And rest in this goodness that the Lord is offering you. Be there. Now, the second part of this is important too. Take my yoke on you and learn from me, for I am humble and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Humility, being humble, one, we can watch the Lord and see this demonstrated so beautifully throughout his life, but it doesn't mean what a lot of people think it means. Humility is everything in its proper place, and a place for everything. As the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes tells us, there's time for everything under heaven. A time to laugh, a time to cry. A time for war, a time for peace. A time for everything. A time for sorrow, a time for joy. Everything has a place. And this is what being humble is, is learning... Right now is a time of sorrow and letting go, acknowledging it, accepting it for what it is, and letting it go. If the power is within you and you are, can see a way in justice to move forward, change it. Maybe you don't have to have your headache. You can just take an aspirin. A lot of people get confused in that. I let go of the pain of my of my headache, so I would just sit here and endure it. If you need an aspirin, go take an aspirin. If you need Tylenol, go take Tylenol. Whatever it is, if you need to take a pill, take a pill. You know, that's why God gave us doctors. That's why God gave us medicine. That doesn't mean that you stop the treatment because you've taken your cares to the Lord. But in His Sacred Heart, you will find peace. You will find rest. And we learn from him, he is humble and lowly in heart. He is humble. Everything has a place. Everything has a place. There's a time for celebration. There's a time for sorrow. There's a time for everything under heaven. And in learning that humility, you will find rest for your soul. You know, as, Mal- as God told Malachi, What do I ask of you, O mortal, but that you love kindness, do justice, and walk humbly before your God? That's it. That's all we're here to do. I say that a lot, and I will continue saying that a lot, because that's all that we're here to do. Love kindness, do justice, and walk humbly before our God. And as long as you're doing those things, and growing in those things, then you are nurturing that sacred heart that is growing within you and making it strong and powerful. This is the center, the core of our faith. This is the most important thing that we do. And don't think when I talk about taking time to meditate that that's only about being silent. That's important. That shouldn't be neglected. But we are talking about the creative way if being creative for you is knitting, knit. If it's, for, if it's cooking, cook. We have a friend who, when she needs an outlet, she just bakes. And then she just gives it all away. That's two things. That's being kind. And it's exercising her creativity. And that's what you need to do. You have, need to find those things that nurture and feed your spirit. They're in you. Maybe it's telling a story. Maybe it's playing a video game. Don't tell me you can't be creative in video games. (laughs) Right? But you find those things, and you take them, and you make them yours, and you do them. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, says, For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he would grant you, that's you and me, according to his riches in glory, 
that you may be strengthened with the power of his spirit in the inward man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, to the end that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be strengthened to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know Christ's love which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to all the fullness of God. This is what we are nurturing within us. Like I said, when we talked about Jesus Christ, our high priest, when we saw our Lord crucified on that cross, compassion for this broken man is born in us. That's the seed of the sacred heart of Christ indwelling in you. That is the first seed of faith born in us and we nurture it and we pray God to keep strengthening it and we work ourselves to strengthen it to grow in this love for to know Christ's love Paul said here in Ephesians 3 14 through 19 for to know Christ's love which surpasses all knowledge and in so doing we may be filled to all the fullness of God all the creative power of God, all the wisdom, the justice, the mercy, the compassion, they would all be in us. This is Christ within us. This is the power of Christ in us. His sacred heart beating in our chest, living in us, guiding us, teaching us and showing us the way that we should walk. When Jesus appeared to St. Margaret Mary, he made several promises about his heart and his, I'm sorry, about this gets me emotional. Several promises of, to those who have this devotion to his heart most holy and sacred heart. The the first, Jesus says, I will give them all graces necessary for their state of life. That's what we talked about at the beginning, right? Come to me all who are weary and I, and you will find rest, right? All the grace is necessary. And remember, we've talked about grace. Grace is not always the removal of that state. Sometimes it is. And glory be to God when it is. But sometimes it's the grace to get through. His second promise, I will give peace in their families. And don't all of our families need peace? The third promise, I will console them in all their troubles. I could use that. How about you? Fourth promise. I will be their refuge in life and especially in death. I could use a refuge. I could use a safe place. And Jesus is that safe place. Number five. I will abundantly bless all their undertakings. I need the blessing of the Lord on what I do. I don't know about you. Number six, sinners shall find in my heart the source and infinite ocean of mercy. Now remember, we've talked about sin. Sin is anything, any act not done in faith, anything that we have not done in that compassion and trust and justice. Anytime we've strayed from the path, in his heart, we will find the source and infinite ocean of mercy. Number seven, tepid souls shall become fervent. I love that. Remember we talked about your heart's getting cold? If your heart is getting cold, it will become inflamed. The fires of God will rain down upon you and you will know the strength of his divine power. 
Glory be to God for that. Number eight, fervent souls shall rise speedily to great perfection. Now notice the path laid out here. Sinners, those who have wandered off the path, will find mercy. Tepid souls whose hearts are cold and stony will become fervent. But once they are fervent here in the eighth promise, they shall rise speedily to great perfection. I will have per- find my way to perfect patience, perfect love, perfect humility, perfect justice. And I will develop those perfections through the sacred heart growing within me. How glorious is that? Number nine, I will bless those places wherein the image of my sacred heart shall be exposed and venerated. We have a statue of the divine heart of Christ, this divine heart showing in our house. I advise you to do the same. It really does make a difference because every time you see it, you're reminded of his sacred heart, of his compassion, of his mercy. And his blessing will be upon you. Number 10, I will give to the priest the power to touch the most hardened hearts. Hallelujah. Number 11, persons who promulgate this devotion shall have their names eternally written in my heart. I want my name written in the heart of Christ. I want my name to ever be close to his heart. Spread the word. Spread the word. And promise number 12. In the excesses of the mercy of my heart, I promise you that my all-powerful love will grant all those, all those who will receive communion on the first Fridays and for nine consecutive months, the grace of final repentance. They will not die in my displeasure, nor without receiving the sacraments, and my heart will be their secure refuge in that last hour. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. May Christ always be our refuge. May he always, always be in us, working for the reconciliation of the world and the recreation of all that is. I thank you for listening. If this has been helpful to you, please share it with a friend. That really does help us out to get the word about Jesus in the path of creation spirituality out to the world. Tomorrow we will talk a little bit more about this one. As we look at Jesus in the way of transformation, we will be talking about the saving host, the Holy Eucharist. You can find this and all of our episodes over at wisdomscry.com. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm Wisdom's Cry, Wisdom Cries Out on Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. Let you know. Let me know what you think. And like I said, if we've been helping you, please spread the word. Let other people know. Everyone needs to see the great mercy available to them in Christ so that they may be filled with grace and love everlasting. Until next time, God bless you. Amen.